morning. Welcome to worship. It is so good to be together. Let us begin with our call to worship. All who need rest. Come, Come all, all who need restoration. restoration. You are in the house of one who weeps. For, For Jesus, Jesus cares deeply about all he loves. Lift your name on high, Lord, I love to sing your praises, I'm so glad you're in my life, I'm so glad you came to save us, you came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my death. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Came from heaven to earth to show the way, from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, these, these 40, 40 days, days we reflect, reflect on how our sin bleeds into the world, leaving a mark that we cannot remove. Forgive, forgive all that we have done and failed to do, and cleanse us from the stain of sin. Dear friends, our God is gracious and forgiving. God does not desire that we wallow in brokenness, but instead cleanses us and makes us new. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sin and walk in newness of life. For the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. God who weeps, as, as Jesus, Jesus wept for the loss, loss of his friend and, and the grief of the family, family we, we know, know he weeps. weeps when we suffer. Remind us of your presence and your goodness during times of sorrow and joy. Amen. Hi kids, I hope you're having a good day wherever you might be. Today's gospel reading is sort of a sad story in a way, and also a happy story. It's sad because it talks about something that makes us sad, and that's death. You know, sometimes uh, we experience that in our life when we have someone we care for, or maybe it's a pet that dies, because we know that we don't all live forever here in this place, but we do live eternally with God. Well, death was something that Jesus dealt with too, not just his death, but death of his family and friends and things like that. Today we hear about one of Jesus' friends. His name is Lazarus. Lazarus has two sisters, Mary and Martha, and Jesus is really close to these three siblings. They're sort of his really close friends, even closer than maybe the disciples were to Jesus. Lazarus gets sick, and word gets to Jesus about Lazarus being sick, and, and what his sisters want is they want Jesus to come right away because they had seen and heard about all the signs that Jesus had done. And they knew that if Jesus could come and be there with his friend Lazarus, that Jesus could make Lazarus well. And John tells us that Jesus loves Lazarus, loves Mary and Martha, 
but he waits before he goes to Lazarus. And what happens is, you know, Lazarus, his sickness becomes too much, and Lazarus dies. And there's a lot of sadness. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever had somebody that you care about pass away? You know, we all experience that, and, and we do get sad. And in John's Gospel, it even tells us that Jesus cried when he saw Mary and Martha and everyone else there being so sad. It hurt Jesus. So Jesus does another sign. It will actually be one of the last signs that he does before he goes to the cross. Jesus uses his voice and calls out to Lazarus after he talks to God. And he tells Lazarus to come out of the grave that he was in and to be alive again. Imagine what that must have felt that day, right? All the sadness of knowing that Lazarus was dead. And then all of a sudden, that sign, that wonder, that miracle, when Jesus tells Lazarus to come out. And there Lazarus is, standing once again alive and with his sisters who love him so much. You know, Jesus might not always heal the people that we love who are sick, because sometimes, kids, illness is just part of our lives. And sometimes people get sick. And sometimes that sickness is too much. But I want you to remember something. In our sadness, when we miss somebody who dies, I want you to remember that there's also joy. There's joy because of what Jesus does. Jesus goes to the cross and takes away our sins. Jesus makes a promise that now the opportunity is for all of us who believe to live eternally with him. So while our loved one maybe is no longer with us, they're alive with Jesus. And there's going to be a day where we get to see them again because death is not going to keep us away. So while Jesus wept for a while for his friend Lazarus, Jesus also gave thanks and was happy and joyful because Lazarus was able to live. And one day we will live again with all of those we love in heaven. You have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Our text for this Sunday comes from the Gospel of John, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. According to Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two, more, two days longer in the place where he was. And then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judah again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. And then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we might die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother... When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. 
Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to, went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Well, friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The story of Lazarus is a story we all know very well, and it's a story of an incredible sign that Jesus performs. That sign of calling out to his friend Lazarus to come out of the tomb. The raising of a man that was dead for four days. Yet, I don't think that is the only point that John is trying to make with remembering this, this story and putting it in his gospel. There's so much going on around this story that I think it would be good for us to reflect on the other story within the story. The other thing that is happening. Last week you heard Pastor Becky talk about Jesus restoring the sight to a blind man. And it was a sign that people were still talking about. We heard it in the gospel today. The Jews that were there with Mary and Martha saying, this man restored the sight to the blind man. Why? Couldn't he also save Lazarus? Let's go back to the very beginning of the text, though. The very beginning of the text where Martha sends word. Or Mary, Mary sends word to Jesus. And they want Jesus to know that his friend Lazarus is sick. Jesus knows all about the illness already, doesn't he? Jesus already knows what's going on. And he already knows what God is going to do with this situation. If you remember, some time back, I pointed out that Jesus doesn't do any sign unless compelled by God. Remember? Jesus doesn't, didn't turn water into wine because his mother asked him. He turns water into wine because God puts it on his heart, just as God is doing here. There is no question that restoration for Lazarus is coming. So if we already know that at the very beginning of this text, 
Then let's figure out what John is also wanting us to understand. We know Lazarus is going to rise, so what else is happening? Well, the first thing that jumps out for me is when you look at the, the start of the text, it says Jesus loves them, right? Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet he chooses to stay where he is for two days. So this isn't a question of Jesus not loving Lazarus, is it? This is a question, this isn't a question of, of Jesus turning his back and saying, no, I'm going to let him suffer so something else can happen. No, Jesus loves them. But he just can't be there with them at that moment. And I want you to think about that. Because how many times have you thought that God doesn't care for you? Or that Jesus' love doesn't extend to you? Why do we think that? Because it's so often easy to fall into that trap when we don't have the physical Christ with us. But here in this story, what do we hear? Even if Jesus can't be physically with us, that doesn't diminish his love for us. His love is still there. His, his love is still overflowing. So that's one of the first things that jumps out here in this story. That even if Jesus isn't there, it doesn't mean that he turns his back and he doesn't love. Even love those who are in the midst of suffering. Jesus has to explain to his disciples what's going on. And once again, John uses that contrast of, of light and darkness. Light and darkness. Jesus is going back to the place where they've already tried to capture him and put him to death, stoning him to death. And yet Jesus says, no, we're going to go back. And we're not going to go back and sneak in. You remember when he went to the festival of booths, he snuck in. Not this time. Jesus is going to walk in the light of day. But then he uses that contrast with darkness. And what is the darkness? Well, the darkness is that which covers the eyes and the hearts of those who are there in the city, of those who are caught up in death, in loss, in grief. Jesus even includes, I think, the Pharisees and the temple leaders who only look at the outer part of who Jesus is and don't listen and don't hear, and thus stay in darkness, and don't walk in the light. Jesus wants the lights on. And that's going to be really important for us to remember as we get further into the text, that Jesus' heart is a heart that wants the light. And he wants all people to live in the light. Light is life for John, and light is life for Jesus. So when he comes into the city and he sees all the weeping, right, or he hears all the weeping, he knows he's got his work cut out for him. It is Martha who comes out first. Martha who comes out and says what probably any one of us would say, Jesus, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Was that a guilt trip on Jesus? No. It was honesty. It was truth. They knew that Jesus was capable of taking this illness away from Lazarus. They knew that Jesus could do an incredible sign for Lazarus. This is Martha being brutally honest with Jesus. If you had been here. It's also Martha showing a little bit of us. A few weeks back we talked about that, that tension that we're in with Jesus. Wanting the immediate when Jesus is talking about the eternal. Well, we're running right into it again. We're running right into it again. And this time, Jesus is going to push it a little further. Martha says the declaration, if you had been here, our brother would be alive. And Jesus follows it up with these words. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? 
Jesus had been preaching this, had been teaching this. Maybe even the first time he was at their house and they sat there and listened to him, they heard about resurrection. Because Martha understands resurrection. She understands that on the day that the Messiah comes again, there will be resurrection. She knows that Lazarus has a future resurrection, yet she still, in her grief, wants her brother. She isn't fully in the light, is she? She's got one foot in light, one foot in darkness. The darkness of the immediate, the light of the eternal. But then something happens to Martha. There's this almost feeling of comfort that comes over her. And she leaves Jesus. And she runs back to her home, runs back to the weeping, runs back to the mourning. And she pulls her sister Mary aside and in a private conversation says, Jesus is here and he wants to see you. Notice that we don't ever have Jesus saying that. Maybe it's just Martha saying, it's your turn. But Mary drops everything and she runs out to Jesus. And what does Mary say when she sees Jesus? The exact same thing that Martha says. Teacher, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And this time, this time those words cut to the heart of Jesus. Is it that Jesus feels like he let his friend down? We don't really know, but I think what it is, as we look at John's gospel, I think what it really is, is Jesus feels the weight of, of all the darkness that is around him, all those who have listened to his teaching and still are not comprehending it. Jesus knows that his days are numbered, and yet there's still so much darkness in the world. The light is not getting to where it needs to be, and that is a burden that is on Jesus, and we hear it in the text Jesus is greatly disturbed. The weight of all of that on top of the fact that Lazarus is dead and there's so much sadness and mourning and weeping, it overcomes our Lord. And John says he weeps. But he weeps for so much more than Lazarus. Again, remember what he says at the very beginning. The decision was already made that Lazarus was going to be raised. Jesus isn't weeping for the death of Lazarus. Jesus is weeping for you and for me and for all who have a foot in darkness and a foot in the light. All of us who wrestle with our sinful selves. All of us who don't fully engage in the faith-filled existence that God gives us. Remember faith? It's a gift. And at that moment in time, and even in our days, there are too many people who are not opening their gift. And that makes Jesus cry. Jesus weeps. And then he collects himself. And he does what he knows he has to do because he's done it every time from the very first sign to this one. He talks to God. He talks to God this time, unlike the very first sign. He talks to God in front of the crowd. This is Jesus' chance that maybe, maybe there'll be more light than darkness if they see it because these are people who have to see things. Jesus speaks to God, already knowing the answer. But he does it so everybody else can see. Our text ends with, a question, with an unanswered question, though. Our text today ends with Lazarus coming out of the tomb. Maybe it's because the writer wants us to experience the overwhelming joy that was in the moment the joy of seeing resurrection, the joy in seeing life restored, that we don't get Jesus' 
question answered. Is there more light than darkness? That's what's left. As you and I walk our days today, where are we at? Are we walking as people of light, or do we find ourselves oftentimes walking in the darkness? See, darkness is easier than light, isn't it? Yet Jesus calls us into the light. And what happens when we fall into the darkness? Well, some would like to say we are condemned. Some would like to say that now God has turned their, his back on us. But what does the scripture say? When we are in darkness, Jesus weeps. How many times are we going to make Jesus cry for us this week? How many opportunities are we going to have in front of us to choose light? This is a heavy story, I know. But it's a story with a question that is unanswered yet even in that unanswered question, there is still hope because every day of our lives, friends, you and I have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to choose light. So I want to encourage you this week to be people of the light. Be people of the light who walk in the clear paths that the light provides. People of the light that allow others to see and come out of their darkness into the light. If Jesus weeps when we're in darkness, Jesus shouts praise when we're in the light. Let us allow Jesus to shout this week. Amen. <clears throat> confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Your word stirs the breath within us. May our every utterance be a proclamation to your glory, a witness of what our God can do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As winter lingers and all appears to be lifeless on the surface, keep us in certain hope that life is at work deep underground, awaiting its moment to spring forth in due course and rejoice in the sunlight of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, you answer all who call on you as you ease the grief of Mary and Martha. So comfort those who have lost someone dear to them. Be with those who face the end of their lives and those who are grieving the death of a loved one. And we pray for all who suffer and ask that you bless them with your healing touch, touch, especially those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, or those who are hospitalized or homebound, those experiencing medical tests, treatments, and surgeries, those on our FLC prayer list, and we pray for those cares and people who weigh heavy upon our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With all the saints who dwell in your eternal resurrection, unite us at length and keep us in communion with all with your whole church on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers and our thanksgiving for your daily blessings of mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught us long ago. Our Father, Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of the storm. No one can do like Jesus, not a mumbling word he said. He went walking down to Lazarus' grave. And him from the dead. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, 
a shelter in the time of a storm. And Jesus was on earth, the flesh was never weak. He took a towel and girded himself, and he washed his disciples' feet. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Yonder comes my Savior, in whom I love so well. He has the palm of victory and the keys of death and hell. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. My Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Dear friends, have a wonderful week, and remember that you are the church wherever you may be.